So Josh, how do you find that you're received by our doctors or GPs um, promoting veganism? Because I obviously work in a GP practice yeah. and um, the doctors there are really quite anti. Really? And it's really hard to break the mould there, yeah. So I'll see things on the notes like um, somebody's got a, you know, they've been unwell or tired and they'll put, oh, not a, not a vegan, not a vegetarian, like, you know, oh, so we can rule those no, out, that's not the cause of it, yeah. yeah. So how do you find that? Um, I, is this on? Yeah. Uh, I find generally people don't, um, uh, don't challenge me very much, or if they do, they soon realise that I know a lot more about nutrition than they do, and they quickly shut up. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I. As I was saying, there just isn't much training on nutrition, and so these nurses tend to just give their own opinions. Um, and as soon as you sort of present studies or, or about ethic or the Adventist Health Study or the Lancet, you know, there's studies coming out all the time showing the benefits. Um, as soon as you do that, they then quickly back down. Um, yeah, I've had, I've had not really any. Any issues? Yeah. Hi, yes, this is a question for Josh. You said uh, to avoid sweeteners. I just wondered if you thought any of the natural sweeteners are safe, like stevia or xylitol. So, yeah, if you are going to have a sweetener, stevia is probably the best one. Um, although I have seen that if you have, if you're having very large amounts. Uh, even that can potentially cause problems to the, the good bacteria, the microbiome, um, which we're finding out more and more is linked to mental health, weight, heart disease. We don't know a lot about it yet, and stevia is still quite a new compound that we're using, so the precautionary principle is to not use too much. But if you are going to, there's, there's less evidence of harm for that than the other ones, like aspartame and saccharin, which there, you know, there is a lot of evidence linked to strokes and diabetes and uh, dementia. Hi, I'm, I'm not sure who to point this one to, but um, all the suffering that the animals go through, why is this actually allowed in this country? I'm surprised it is. I'm sure this question's been asked a hundred times, but why is it actually allowed? Is it? Shouldn't it be? <laughs> I'm sure it's been asked like millions of times. Yeah, I mean, good question. Um, it's all this that I've, I've been describing that's all legal, that's nothing out of the ordinary, and, and it's also one of the um, sort of main issues why we campaign against um, the industries, the sort of animal farming industries, is because, not because animals are sort of abused and tortured by slightly psychopathic individuals, uh, but it's because it's a normalised, sort of institutionalised, almost, suffering. Um, and it's, um, essentially, it's profit. It's because as long as you can keep the animals alive for a certain sort of length of time, um, until you can get some sort of profit from them, um, and then not... Um, I mean, there are certain standards, uh, such as they shouldn't be standing knee-deep in manure and things like that. Um, so as long as, as the, um, the farms are adhering to um, certain standards, it's okay. But as um, it, it's interesting that what we learned from the dispatches program was that um, what, what Julia Galati said, the founder of FIBA, it was when she entered that farm, it was the vision of hell. And then there was a vet invited to comment on, on the state the animals were in. And he said, oh, it's certainly not a vision of hell. This is a standard pig farm. It's because people have been brought up with this, seeing it as normal. So they don't even think about it. And it's something that unless you actually stop and think about, oh, is this, is this all right? Should we be doing this? That many people just don't, don't think about it. They don't even believe that animals have emotions and that they can suffer. And I think that's one of the very difficult things to sort of a mindset to change because if you're not willing to admit that the animals suffer in that situation, it's a stalemate because you know we're saying they suffer and they're saying, oh no, they don't suffer. Um, and because, um, I mean, a lot of the, the inspections and sort of vet controls and some of them are announced, some of them are unannounced. 
but a lot of the vets have ties to the farms, they have themselves been brought up as a part of the industries, so they don't necessarily see it any differently to the farmers. Um, and, um, you know, when I like, went to events to like the UK Dairy Day, um, there are young people brought in, not, not, not as a young, like 20 something young people, but children brought up to essentially become a part of the system and to view it as a desirable and a normal situation. So I think it's just like a whole system gone wrong um, where a huge part of the population don't see this as an issue. Well, yeah, yeah, different rules for, for, yeah. for, for pets and for farmed animals, but yeah, I mean, a lot of, obviously, a lot of, um, not just activists and um, vegans are challenging it, but a lot of institutions, a lot of animal behaviour specialists, uh, a lot of scientists uh, are calling for a change, but it, the change is happening very, very slowly, but it's more likely that the change will come from the public as in, you know, lessening the demand for it rather than it being banned officially. Um, hi, I, I, am, I am not vegetarian, but I try to be and I would like to be vegan someday, but I really like honey and um, I don't, I mean, I have empathy with cows and most of animals, but I don't have much empathy, sorry for the bees. I really like honey and I would like you to tell me if, I mean obviously they're suffering too, I understand that, don't take me wrong, but I wonder is there any healthy problems I could get by eating honey? And besides this, I also would like to know, because I live in Spain and it's very different than here, then you don't have much options for vegan or vegetarian, like more vegetarian than vegan. So I, I would have to cook basically everything to like eat vegan, you know. And um, there is now starting, like in, in where I live in Spain, it's starting now like more organic food, more than vegan or vegetarian. People are more worried about like if the, the vegetables are like, um, you know, organic. So then it, but it's really expensive. So then if you if you think about what, which is better, like, um, because if you become a vegan, are you gonna also to like be like a organic vegan? So that's really expensive. So I want to like just to tell me your tips, why you guys think about these two things going on in my mind now. <laughs> Um, first, I think it's awesome that you're thinking about those things. I think that's, for most of us, that's a really important first step, is to first acknowledge that there's an issue. So it sounds like there's two kind of things, main things going on. It's the um, organic versus not, and um, bees. I, I think if you were to look at all species, you know, from cows and pigs and mammals that we can connect with, all the way down to um, fish and insects, and you were to draw a line with where they're aware, I would recommend drawing it in pencil because it's probably gonna change as you go on. Bees may um, not be there for you. I know for me, it took a while for birds and fish. The thing I would say is if we don't have to do it and it's not necessary, you know, if you saw a bee on this, um, walking on the footpath, my chances are you wouldn't go out of your way to step on them. So I, I, I hear what you're saying though, I think different people relate in different ways. So I mean, there is, as part of the honey production cycle, they are killed, so that's the main thing. As far as from an empathy perspective, I, I hear you, and I think, just I would just encourage you to try the alternatives. You know, there's maple syrup, agave syrup, lots of other things that you can replicate that sweetness. However, I think you're already a long part of the way there with uh, connecting with the other species. So I think you deserve a huge pat on the back for that, and I would just ur um, urge you to continue exploring that. And, I think if we went down the line, we may all have different opinions on the organic versus not. Personally, I don't stress it as a part of um, what I consume. They oftentimes use animal, animal manure to fertilize the organic veg, so I'd much rather have farmers have to pay to get their animals' waste hauled away versus subsidizing that, so there's kind of two schools of thought on that, but I think there's probably some other thoughts that we can chuck, chuck in there as well. Is there any, anything you guys would like to add? Uh, with the honey, I have to say that um, honey is sugar, 
So it has the same effects of, of any kind of sugar. So it's going to increase your insulin. Um, you know, if you're eating a lot of it, it's a risk factor for diabetes, um, weight, weight gain. So um, yeah, any type of sugar I try and avoid. Um, and in terms of organic, um, uh, I think some fruit and veg uh, have more residue on them. There's the Dirty Dozen. I talked about the Daily Dozen earlier. This is an, another website that um, has the top 12 um, fruit and veg that have the most pesticides. Um, so if you're worried about that, I'd, I'd look at that because you're right, it can be expensive. And generally the evidence um, you know, is, is nowhere near as strong you know, harm from pesticides as there is for animal products. So if you want to change your, if you want to improve your health, there's a lot more demonstrable data, health improvements from, from whole food plant-based diets. Um, you know, a, a third lower chance of heart disease. There's, there's nothing in pesticides with, with any, anything near that kind of figure. Um, uh, cancer, again, 18% um, increased risk of bowel cancer with 50 grams of uh, red meat a day. Um, again, no, no figures comparable with pesticides. Yeah, I was just going to say that I think it's called the, um, it's EWG, isn't it? Environmental Working Group, yes. is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was just going to say that it's um, what I, it's, that is the resource I share with my clients um, if they're asking about organic. I mean, obviously in an ideal world, we want to reduce our toxic load as much as we can. You know, um, we, we are um, bombarded with toxins throughout our day, throughout our um, week, our lives um, and that build up does have an impact on our health um, so in an ideal world we want to reduce that as much as we can but it's also about being realistic and um, using the time money resources um, energy that you have available and just making the best choice that you can in the moment um, and if you did want to just make a few swaps um, for some organic um, products going on that website, you can look at the Dirty Dozen, it's, I think it's ewg.org or, or something like that. And I think they update it every year as well, so you've got the Dirty Dozen and you've got the Clean 15. Um, but I mean, as a general rule, um, if something has like a sort of like a hard casing or peel, like avocado or banana, um, that's quite protected from the pesticides. So really what's inside is gonna be quite clean, um, like the softer um, fruits and vegetables um, and things that grow above the ground um, that are gonna have the chemicals sprayed onto them. Um, they are obviously gonna um, absorb more of the toxins. So um, things like stone fruits and berries, um, leafy greens and apples. Um, do absorb quite a lot of chemicals as well, so things like that. But yeah, it's definitely something that you can look into and just start making a couple of smart swaps um, that feel good to you. Just a, just a really, really quick one, <laughs> quick thing to add about the sort of organic versus not, um, is that um, I agree with everything you said, um, but also we have to realise that um, pesticides, which are the main problem in, in sort of organic versus not organic, they accumulate in animal tissues. So when you eat meat or dairy or eggs, you're getting quite a concentrated dose of pesticides because pesticides are used quite heavily in producing animal feed at the, the crops that feed the animals. So then when you eat the animal tissue, whatever that is, um, you're already getting quite a high dose of pesticides with it. So eating even non-organic fruit and vegetables is always better than eating the animal food that already has that in it anyway. Can I ask, do beaver go into secondary schools? Because I was thinking, you know, yeah. your, your presentation about so powerful and my, my daughter left school about three years ago and certainly, you know, nobody came into the school to do this sort of presentation to pass Mm -hmm. by younger people well yeah we very occasionally do but essentially because we don't have enough people to do that uh, we did um, so-called school speakers training days where we trained other people and we had to drop that scheme for a couple of years just because we we're running out of, sort of resources and people able to do that but we're looking into relaunching it um, and training more people to be able to give go to schools and give talks um, 
not just to have more people, but also so it's, it's kind of like more local. But if you have somebody around the corner who can do the talk, <laughs> it's easier for, for, for both parties. But yeah, we, we'd love to, essentially. Yeah, and then you've got the issue of, of not us not really being welcome <laughs> in many schools. Not not because of past experiences, but just because of the teachers, obviously, and their own attitudes and opinions. Yeah. You could just become a teacher and then infiltrate the school back. I'd like to use determination. I'm on the PTA, so I'm, I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to work my way in that way. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, looks like we got a question up front. Not to put you on the spot, Morocco, I think you're in a unique position where you've been in animal advocacy for at least, sounds like 14 years. I think that's that's a huge achievement. I was just wondering, myself included, we've got a lot of young advocates in the room. I was wondering if there's anything you've learned over the last decade plus of experience that you wish you'd known or that you'd like others to kind of keep in mind. Oh, good question. No pressure. Uh, I think, the main, the main point would be like, don't be afraid to speak up, because I was, and um, I to share a, a, another bit of personal story. I started um, studying veterinary medicine because that was my dream, and I dropped out because of animal experiments and the fact that you'd have to approve of practices in at farms and slaughterhouses that I didn't approve of. So I dropped out and went on to study biology. Um, but I was I was young and I was very shy about you know speaking my mind and and now i would go back and say no you just stand up and speak up for the animals because i just felt like i couldn't fight the system because i was just being crushed by it and i feel like no it's okay to speak up and there are now so many student groups so many sort of university groups um that sometimes people just have to sort of look around who's out there and um, who's there to support them and you know, you never know where the support is going to come from. But I would say, also, another point, um, it's so much easier now than it used to be. Uh, not that it helps people who are just becoming active now, but it's seen as much more normal to care and to stand up for either your rights, animal rights, um, human rights. Um, that it's becoming more acceptable, even if you come up against opposition, that um, people are more accepting, even if they don't agree with you, they at least acknowledge that you have the right um, to voice your concern. Wow. Well, thank you so much for all the speakers today. Thank you everyone for coming. Maybe one big round of applause for everyone here today. And uh, safe journey home. Thanks again. And there's lots more vegan cake at the back, so please help yourself uh, at a very cheap half price, I think, um, I've heard. So dig in. Thanks again, everybody.